adventures of Sam Spade, Detective. Sam Spade, Detective Agency. Oh, Spade, sweetheart. Oh, hello, Sam. What are you doing? Having breakfast, Abby. Breakfast? But it's 7.30 in the p.m. Well, it's a toxic-turvy world, sweetheart. What was the problem, Sam? Oh, a cold key to the door of her apartment. She couldn't figure out what it unlocked. Very complex case, Abby. Greed, passion, twisted ambitions, hate, love, vengeance, and murder. The whole gamut. It was uh, ghastly every now and then. Well, Sam, maybe we ought to put off the report for morning when you're feeling fresher. Oh, it's very considerate of you, sweetheart, but I'd like to get it off my chest now tonight. If you uh, want to help, just be at your desk. Now, don't say anything when I come in. Just be there. Sam, you sound so serious. Just be, sweetheart. We'll see. I'll be right down to dictate my report on the gold key caper. <laughs> You're 
afraid of anything. What do you expect? 1234, Van Nuys. What time are you doing? It's about to get dinner on the street. I'll be there a quarter up. Budget four times. Long, short, long, short. No. No, don't use it. I don't want to make any mistakes. Here. Take this. Set yourself here. Gold key to Johnny. Forever. Yes. Okay. Now, don't worry, Angel. Don't worry. You can put a new name on there. This one's not engraved very deep. <laughs> After she'd gone, a heavy fragrance clung to everything she touched. The chair she sat in, my glass with her lipstick on it for 300 bucks, even the gold key. I rubbed it up against my coat plate. The name didn't come off, it only shone brighter. I threw it across the room just to see if it was bounce. It did. And when I walked over to pick it up, there were two keys, or at least one and a half. The gold shank had been hollowed out, and the key that fitted inside it was wrong again, Dundee. Not a glass key. A brass key with a number on it, 322, nothing else. I wondered if Johnny Batiste had been living a double life, or at least one and a half. I was still wondering when I put the brass key back into its hiding place and used the gold one to unlock the door of one of the box. The room was full of her perfume, but she wasn't there. Johnny Batiste was. He was cleaning the prison dirt out of his fingernails with a shiny new spring blade knife. Give me that key. What for? You're in. What's one? She changed her mind. She don't want to see you. Who changed it for? I did. I told her she shouldn't ought to marry into the wrong set. So give me that key and blow. Where is she in here? I told you to blow. You don't want to see it. You don't miss me yourself. You're sir happy. Spade. I didn't rot in that state hotel three years to get pushed around. Why do you think I took that rap? You took it for her? You're crazy. She was through with you before you went up. I just go on talking like that. Go on. <coughs> I'll cut you. I'll cut you real bad. Copper! Johnny, I don't want to hurt you, but I'll try. Good night, Johnny. Go on. Copper, go! The first thing you ought to learn about civilian life, Johnny, is don't jump somebody until you know what it's all about. What did she tell you? Oh, forget it. You'll get this cheaper than I did. But she's three years older. <laughs> so am I. Listen, Johnny, here's my card. If there's any way I can help you, let me know, will you? I mean it. Gee, you got a heart, sister. They gave me 50 bucks and they pushed me out the gate, but I dropped it in a poker game down at Sixth Mission. Right off the bus. Sucker. Johnny Dick. Any from those, Johnny? No, nothing that ain't mine. Hey. That key is mine. My name's on it. They couldn't do nothing to me if I hopped that, could they? Not even 10 or 15. That's not as gold. They'll give me a place to flop until I get my feet on me again. Yeah, like you say, your name's on it. Here, take it. Hey, you can have your knife, too. <sighs> You're an all right guy. I'm sorry for the things I said. Hey, wait a minute. Where's Wanda? I don't know. I haven't seen it. And I don't want to see it. I went to the window and watched him leave the building. He didn't cough when the cold air hit him. Instead, he took a deep breath and strode briskly across the street and into a neon lighted bar and grill. Something about his swagger bothered him. Giving him the gold key might or might not have been as smart a move as I thought it was, but I was sorry I'd given him back his knife. Sam Spade, sucker. Sunday, I decided to start acting like a detective for a change. I took a chance on Johnny to teach being thirsty enough after three years to keep his elbow crooked the file long enough for me to frisk one as a partner. I didn't think I'd find her body there, but I did. I deduced that it was in the clothes closet from the feeble cries and puffings I heard as I walked into the bedroom. <laughs> Oh, but, but that's not all I said. Oh, you'll never forgive me for this. I know I... 
Why were you there? Why were you? Why, you poor baby. I came out to you. Shut up. I want some answers. I don't want explanations. I don't want excuses. And if I catch you using what you know you do to me to snake your way out of this one, I'll... What have I done to you tonight? You're first, Johnny, that Mike and you. You're starting again. It's the last time. Where am I? I'm sorry. What do you want to know? Are you in love with Johnny? But I told you, no. Mike Malloy? No. You're going to marry Malloy? What was in that room? Eight dead men. What else? A lot of blood and powder smoke. Now I'll see if I'm going to marry Malloy. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. I'll see you later, Angel. I think all you've been through for me, how long does I work? I wonder. 
but you and everything else. And the moon, too. Oh, I've never dreamed there'd be anything perfect. It's just too good to be true. Good night, Father. 